So this is going to be a video series that is made in conjunction with some articles that I'm putting on the website. On April 13th, I believe, in Lafayette, Louisiana, Conquistador Strength is going to be putting on their second strongman competition. I'm going to be making a video for each of the events that are going to be involved. Today's video is going to involve the Axle Clean and Press. So right now I'm warming up a little bit. I'm gonna go really, 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 really light today because we already did some training earlier and frankly, my ass is whooped. But we're gonna go over a few different options for both the clean and the press. And yeah, we're just gonna see how it goes. So now, you get to stare at me awkwardly while I finish this in silence. So first things first, I want to talk about some of the differences in a standard barbell and an axle. This will it'll help you kind of understand why there are some different ways you have to do things. The axle, let me take this weight off so you can see it better. The axle was the barbell before our modern barbell was a thing. It's basically one solid pipe with, I don't actually know what these are called, but they sell them at Home Depot, but it's just, just welded on there and it stops the weight. But yeah, it's one solid piece of equipment. The traditional barbell that we use today, however, it is not. This is, it's very much a, very much a piece of engineering. It's machined together. It's usually going to have a bushing or a bearing. This is the Rode Castro bar. It's gonna have a bearing in there. And this sleeve will actually spin while the shaft remains stationary. This means that whenever you actually go to clean it, however much weight you have on this isn't actually going anywhere. It's going straight up and then you catch it while the bar the shaft, you're spinning it around. Now, this means that you don't have to turn the whole weight over in your hand. So if you've got 250 pounds on this bar, you aren't actually physically turning 250 pounds over in your hand when you go to catch it. That bar is spinning, therefore you can kind of get away with it a little bit more. It's a very good piece of machinery. But like, look at this. I'm gonna put this 45 pound plate on here. I'm gonna lock it down with this collar, and then I'm gonna spin it. I could probably finish telling you what I'm gonna tell you, and this will keep spinning the whole time. We'll, we'll put that to the test. Now, put a weight on here. Yes, it will spin a little, but friction's gonna stop it because it doesn't have the ability to rotate around that bearing. And dep depending on the implement you're using, it may even be fixed all the way through. Like, let's take a, I'm gonna murder this pronunciation, but the Apollon wheels. It's just a, it's the, uh, the axle for a railroad car. That's one fixed implement it's not gonna spin anywhere. So, kinda train for that. You wanna get some of these uh, 2.5 kilogram Ivanko collars that allow you to put some lateral pressure on the plate. And then the whole thing just rolls together as one fixed implement. So yeah, because of the differences in technology there, you're gonna have to treat this differently than you would a traditional barbell and you'll see that come up throughout this video. All right, so let's talk some different options for the clean. You've got the standard power clean, which if you're watching this channel and you're looking up 
some things on Strongman, you probably have already seen a power clean. In events where you're going for max reps, that's going to be the most time efficient and the most energy efficient because you can just throw it on up there and you, you're not wasting time. You get more reps on your actual press. So what that's going to look like, you're going to square up to the bar, centered of course, you grab a double overhand grip, and as you pick it up, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to jump and shrug really hard. So it's going to look something like that. It's kind of hard for me to mine without something in my hands. But anyway, this is what it looks like. You grab the bar, get your lats tight, and you're just going to pop it right on up. The weight's light, that's going to be real easy. It's going to save the most time. That's where you're going to make the most bang for your buck. Now, something you don't see very often, but I personally like this, it's going to be a split clean. I like the split clean because you can drop your body a little bit lower while keeping an upright torso. You can't drop into a squat with this. It's one fixed implement, so you're just gonna, you're just trust me, you're not gonna be able to do it. You're gonna dump the bar right out in front of you because you actually have to roll the entire weight of the implement rather than just spinning the bar while the weight free spins around the sleeves. Anyway, split clean. What that's gonna look like Setup's the same, you're going to get into your position, but when you pop, you're going to go into a split stance like you would for a split jerk. Notice I was able to get a little bit lower that way. Now, if we are doing something a little bit heavier, and you're not able to double overhand grip it because it is a two inch barbell or two inch shaft, yeah, you call it the shaft. Your grip's gonna be limited, so you're not necessarily gonna be able to double over. You're not going to be able to double overhand it. I am not going to do a second take and repeat all that. Just because it will mess up. So you gotta figure out a way to get it up with a mixed grip. This is you saw this probably a few years ago in a CrossFit fail video and didn't know what it was, unless you've been interested in strongman for a while, in which case you've seen this before. But there's going to be multiple pops in this. You're going to pop it up, what they call your belly shelf. You're going to do another pop. You turn your hand over. And then on the third pop, that's when you turn your, el your elbows underneath. So what it's going to look like, tighten my belt, create that belly shelf. Do you know the Muffin Man? You can get your mixed grip. Get your lats tight. First pop. Up to here, the bar stays over the midfoot, so even though it looks crazy, it's not that bad. Second pop, turn your hand over, third pop, that's when you're going to actually get your elbows underneath the bar. And from here, you got other options. So let's talk about those. Alright, disclaimer. I am personally a believer of always facing the rack whenever you're doing something. But due to the limitations of setup of this gym, I'm not really going to be able to give you a good angle that way. So I got these set up, and I'm going to walk out forward, and I'm going to show you the different versions of the actual press. And strongman, they don't care how you get it over your head, with the exception of the Viking press. There tends to be some rules on that. But this isn't a Viking press; it is an axle press. You can straight press it, you can do a push press, or you can jerk. It. All that counts as long as it's locked out overhead and you get the down command, it's a good lift. So we're going to go over those. We're going to start with the strip press. You're probably already familiar with this, but you got your setup, stay tight, and you just press it overhead. Make sure you drive your head through the window and turn it to the side so you can kind of see this. But it's basically like your opening window and driving your head through. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Hundreds of videos out there. I'll make one eventually. So, next version is going to be push press. All you do is you do a little bit of a knee bend out to the side. And when you come up, what I want you to think about doing is 
squeeze your butt cheeks together as hard as you can. It's going to add some more power to it. So you're going to dip and drive. What that's going to do is it's going to get the bar past your sticking point. And from then, it's just your tricep to get that locked out. You can save some time and energy that way. That's probably going to be, if the weight's light enough, your best bet. You can save a lot of time that way because you're literally just pressing it down, pressing it down. You don't have to worry about resetting the feet or anything like that. If the weight's a little heavier though, you're going to have to resort to one of the jerks. It's a little bit more complicated of a movement. I admit I am the not the best person to teach jerks. Uh, go check out like the Lion's Den channel. They, he's got a lot of good stuff on that. That's where you're going to get a lot more information, but I can kind of briefly go into it here. But what you're going to do is just like get centered. Just like when you do your push press, you're going to go knees out, but whenever you complete that extension, you're going to drop back down under the bar like this. And you're going to catch it at the top. So it takes a little bit more time because you actually have to extend your legs back out. But as you can see, it's very efficient. The next overhead version, I'm sorry, variation, is going to be your split jerk. This is going to be the most efficient as far as energy goes. You get the most weight over your head this way. But it takes a long time and a lot of practice to master. I am not there yet, but I can show you what it looks like. The reason why, though, you should save this for your actual heavier events is because it's going to take a long time to reset. Because whenever you do your split, you actually have to reset your stance every time. The weight's light enough, and you can just push press or push jerk the whole way through. Do that because you'll have time to get more reps in. Anyway, this is what the split jerk is going to look like. Right so you got the bar. You dip, drive. Ah, that one was really, really ugly. I'm not very good at split jerk. Let's try it again. That one looked a little bit better. One more time. So yeah, most competitions, that's going to be allowed. If you're good at it, you'll be able to get the most weight up that way. I'm still practicing, so hopefully that'll come better with time. So yeah, that's, that's all I got for today. Like I said, this is going to be part of a series the next one I'm going to do, I believe, is going to be the, uh, which one is it? It's going to be the Husafel carry? It's going to be the Husafel carry or the Jefferson deadlift. But those are both coming up, as well as a stone over bar and a, what was the last event in that? Yoke carry. It's going to be a yoke carry. So those are going to be the five videos that I put in this series. And yeah, hopefully some people who are going to be competing in the Swamp Monster Shootout in April in Lafayette, Louisiana, hopefully some of y'all will see it, get some value out of it. So keep an eye out for that. If you like the video but you haven't seen the vlog yet, I'm going to link that down below so you can go and you can check that out and go into a little bit more detail about some things. And uh, this is the point where people on YouTube usually have some kind of catchphrase. I don't have one of those. If you have ideas for catchphrases, drop them below, shoot me a message. Uh, until then, uh, here's some awkward finger guns. Yeah, that's all I got. So, see you next time.